Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Bank, welcome back to another Fix Your Form video where I take your form, try to clean it up, try to guys make, help you become better lifters. If you want to get involved, we need three reps, 70% of your one rep max, filmed horizontal, sent to askmikke at gmail.com. Check it out. My man right here. Setup's a little bit uh, funky. It looks like your back's going to be in a real, real bad place, but you get it into an okay spot at that starting position. What I'd like to see is your hips a little bit higher shins a hair more vertical and keep pushing yourself behind the bar uh, shoulders are just a little bit in front of the bar what it'll allow you to do is one flatten that back out uh, but two it'll keep that back flat even at lockout what we want is to remain in a solid position from start to finish and although your starting position is pretty dang good your back gets a little curly when the bar gets just off of the ground uh, and then what you're going to have to do is unravel that weight and the heavier it gets again if our hips aren't in the proper position we won't be able to push our hips through uh, and lock out cleanly and it'll end up being a grind every single time so good position there you get it off the ground that back takes the first portion of that weight to get it off and it loses position so what we want is hips a little bit higher back a little bit flatter and we want full tension through our arms and our low back at the beginning pushing your hips backwards to the walls behind you not downwards when people say hips down or hips back what we want is not hips down we want hips backwards like this man right here he wants to push his hips back towards that guy on the bicycle or whatever the heck he's doing elliptical a little bit of sumo deadlifts pretty decent uh, again right off the ground many of us are having issues here with finding tension you can see you try to get into position but there's still still some looseness from the bar to your arms what we want to do is pull out that entire slack so we want full tension in our arms and our low back right here you drop your hips but there's not tension in those arms so when you pull off the ground all the load goes to your mid to low back and then we have to unravel ourselves later what i'd rather have you do is keep pulling see it goes from zero to 100 what we want to do is get a little bit of acceleration going we want to slowly get some tension to that body and don't think about jerking on that bar no more jerking boys and girls not in the gym no more no less we've done this too many times for too many years no more jerking in the gym so what you do there is again not those hips down you want those hips high and then you want to sit back pull yourself back while pulling your shoulders up getting some heavy weight into your hands so say there's 315 on the bar i want at least 100 pounds in your hands before you really hit the gas and begin to pull my man's got a towel trick i don't know what's going on maybe it's maybe it's hot and sweaty in the gym i wouldn't suggest that it'll probably make the bar even slipperier uh i don't know what's going on uh maybe he's just a, a germaphobe in that case props to you man it might be dirty in there i do agree maybe some hand sanitizer instead of a towel but what am i i'm no i'm no toxicologist i'm no doctor i'm no virus specialist uh take a little bit while to set here maybe overthinking a little bit uh, what we want to be able to do Again, hips are a little bit too low. Uh, similar to our first guy, issues are we're trying to curl our hips under us to get them to the bar, but what we want to do is flatten that back out. So let's drop that chin, stop looking at the mirror. We want those hips a little bit higher and really flat back. The tension uh, on this pole is a little bit better. You're not jerking on it as much as the other two, um, but our back's in a little funkier position. So again, flatter back, breathing and bracing in our stomachs. One, going to allow us to lock out efficiently because we'll be able to use our glutes and hams just to push our hips forward. Two, it'll allow us to stay healthier and more efficient long term so we can handle more volume and overall getting stronger. Right, The more sets, reps, and weight we can handle in training and staying safe, over the long term, months, six months, years, the stronger we'll be able to get and the more muscle we'll be able to build. Um, so that's obviously the keys here for technique. It's not only just to lift the most amount of weight or look the prettiest or not only just to not get uh, injured, but it's a combination of all of them. Once you have good technique, you're more efficient with the lift. The most efficient lift allows you to lift the most amount of weight and stay the safest. It's super convenient on our part. We hit all three birds with one stone. So my man, Try moving that stance in, head down a little bit. Right there, your hips are going to stay in a similar position from right here. You're just going to end up flattening your back. Uh, but what you're trying to do is squat the weight up, and that low back doesn't have the range uh, to stay flat in that position. So right from the beginning, see right there, before you release, right there is where you should keep your hips. Flatten that back out, lock in your lats, neck down a little bit. Stop cranking on that poor little neck of yours, buddy. Uh, another thing I would try to do for everybody, this is just this general cue. Stop looking at a mirror, get some flatter shoes. If you're looking at a mirror and you're powerlifting or getting real strength training in, stop doing it. Uh, and if you're not squatting and deadlifting in flat shoes, don't do it. Get some flatter shoes. I like the dungeon vibe here. It looks like a gasoline tank in the background, a little bit of agua. My man's getting after it. Ooh, 
pretty clean. Uh, again, it looks like perhaps you got some squishy shoes on, so we want some flatter shoes. Uh, hips are in a decent position, but one thing you can see at that lockout gets a little funky is that your knees get in the way of the barbell, which tells me your hips are going to have to be even a little bit higher. So your back's in a good position. It looks like you're pretty tight, uh, but if your knees are pushing the barbell away from you around shin height, then what we need to do is get a little bit more vertical shin. We need our shoulders adjust on top of the bar at our starting position, and that'll allow that bar to be most efficient. In the deadlift, uh, conventional or sumo, we want that bar to travel pretty straight, straight up and down, if not just back toward you. And what you can see right there around the knees is that barbell gets pushed in front of you. Obviously not the most efficient. The most efficient is a straight line from A to B. Uh, so what you could try to do is move that stance in a little bit more narrow. That might change it just on its own. Or two, have those hips a little bit higher, my man. Uh, overall looks really, really solid. Back's in a good spot, neck's in a good spot. Overall starting position is still, you know, maybe a, a eight out of 10, but let's make that a 10 out of 10 flatter shoes hips a little bit higher keep breathing embrace and figuring out my man here got some heavy ass weight we got some sumo going looking pretty efficient actually looking pretty efficient actually right now from this view i don't know if there's much i would change to be honest it looks like he's just repping out 500 pounds like it's nobody's business so that last set it looks like you just got a little bit tired a little bit lazy make sure to lock those lats in uh but on all the other ones it looks really solid so some of the main differences um you know, person to person are going to be torso length, arm length, and leg length on how your deadlift's going to look. But overall rules of how we set up for the deadlift are always going to be the same. They're just going to visually look different, right? We want our hips a little bit lower in our shoulders. We really want to breathe and brace our midsection into our belt, flex our lats as much as we can. Uh, with the sumo, typically we want our shins a little bit more vertical. With the conventional, our knees can travel forward a little bit, get some quad off the ground. Um, Shoulders going to be just on top of the bar. We're going to get a lot of tension through our system, all the slack out of our back, tension into our hamstrings, slack out of our arms, and then we're going to begin to pull. And my man does that really, really good, except for that very last rep. You can tell he probably just got fatigued. Shoulders came forward a little bit rather than flexing those lats. And it looks like he jerks a little bit and under maximal loads or under fatigue, that's going to end up either being a misrep or perhaps a little tweak. So um, just make sure you're consistent there, my man. Really good, good, really good reps, really good sumo. We got a bright light in the background. Another, uh, here's an Instagrammer clip for you. Instagrammer behind the scenes tip. If you want to do better videos, always put the camera from the direction the light's coming. So right now my man would film from the opposite direction uh, and everything would look a little bit cleaner. But look, I'm no, I'm no, I'm no model. I'm no, I'm no Fitzbo. I just aspire to be. I just aspire to be, if you know what I'm saying. Everybody, again, thanks for visiting this channel. We got a couple more forms we're going to get after, but right now, if you're enjoying this type of video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. Turn on notifications. New videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, my man right here, everything from what I can see, even though it's a little bit blurry and off the side, looks pretty dang solid. Back's in a pretty damn good position. Uh, neck's a little funky. Uh, there might be a mirror there, which is, remember, guys, rule number one, everybody. No mirrors. Rule number two, everybody. Flatter shoes. Um, so what I'll try to do is drop that chin and drop that eye line just a little bit. That's just going to keep you a little bit more comfortable position, allow you to not strain those traps and neck so much, uh, as well as often what we do with our neck. No, we're not going to go to Snap City and your head's going to fall off, but often what we do with our neck translates to how flat or not flat our back will be and also the positioning of our hips. Um, it's just a little bit of a cue. It's a visual cue. And sometimes if your neck's being a little wonky, your hips will be a little wonky. And right here, your hips are just a hair off. You can see a little bit of rounding uh, in that low, low back. And I think if you fix that neck position, your back will naturally get into that, uh, the, 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 the more erect, tight midline that we're looking for. So again, breathing abrasing neck down um but otherwise my man it looks really really solid can't tell the weight here and again if you filmed into the light a little bit i might be able to check a little bit more um some of the angles if you guys want to send in directly from the side is best and then directly from the front uh, those two positions typically uh, will allow a coach or an expert to give you the best feedback uh, something like this i just can't see where your shins are to the bar um, from the grounds a little bit hard too but if you could do it straight from the front um, you can also see the symmetry and how things look and directly on the barbell would help okay we went a little heavier here yeah man uh the light's a little bit better in this one you can see the form's pretty dang good dude i think your hips maybe just a hair higher Right there, you can see you drop them low, but the bar doesn't begin moving until they get into position they want. And that's naturally going to happen for everybody just because of leverages. Um, the bar won't move until your hips are in the proper place. So might as well, let's practice on putting our hips in the proper place. And then two, man, you're just really straining on that neck. I honestly think it'll fix that hip problem I'm talking about. So drop that chin a little bit. 
work on the filming skills, get more likes on Instagram because we all know that's what's going to pave the way for success. Likes on Instagram. Can I get an amen in the comments below? Can I get a Mike preach in the comments below? Can I get a Mike, you so right in the comments below? Another conventional poll, a lot of conventional polls today. Appreciate, again, everybody sending it in to ask M-I-K-K-E at gmail.com. It is appreciated. Let's see what we got. My man's right here. Locked in those lats, locked in the back. Really, really solid pull. You see the hips may appear a little bit high, but they're still below the shoulders and allows him to keep that back flat. One thing, oh, that's the rep right there. He rocked a little bit back extra there. That's exactly what I was going to say. If you could push those hips back and not down still, get those shoulders a little bit over the bar, a little bit better. For my man here, I would recommend chin up just a little bit. It'll allow you to perhaps get a little bit more upright and allow you to just be balanced a little bit more. So keep on breathing, embracing that back. Keep on working on flexing those lats harder and harder. Appreciate you guys. Solid Mike. I'll catch you in the next video. We're out of here. Again, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. New videos and twitching at least five to seven days a week. Info in the description below. Catch you guys in the next one.